Hello and welcome back to JLXP post LCS week two. This time I brought along a guest, not his first time on JLXP, but his first time on this version of JLXP. That's true. You did like season previews with me back in 2020 spring. So it's been yeah. it's been over two years, I think, since I want to say JLXP. though, that was the one where I called that Closer and Co were gonna be good pickups and that it was gonna make a good team. And lo and behold, that became like the, the Gigabrain Golden Guardian squad that became hundred thieves. So I just wanna I just wanna say that I called it. Okay. Um and and just, you know, no one watched that episode back and, and think about the other claims I made that were wrong. Do you have another claim right now that is gonna be bold but will be right? In two uh, years. Oh wow! Oh wow! That's I know. Neat. This is not in uh, our yeah. outline, but you brought it up, so I figured okay, this yeah. is a great. Okay, LCS is going to win worlds this year. I said it was going to be EG, but not doing so hot. But I'll I'll stick <laughs> with the the LCS is going to win worlds this year. This is the one. Wouldn't that be something? That would be the year. Like, if there's, I, I I've t I've had this conversation with a lot of people um, about like the LEC versus LCS narratives that go mm -hmm. on. But like, the year that Worlds was in Europe was also coincidentally G 2s best year, <clears throat> which just like catapults the region's popularity so like i really 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 hope with the format changes that allow for some more scrim time compared to last year champions queue the second year of a new like amateur and academy system like i hope that that can at least boost the chances of na because you know yeah i really care about the region i want us to do well so i'll, I'll go with it I, I don't think it's right yeah but uh you there's a chance you know what's funny though is I think not since maybe 2015 has the world champion been on home soil, if I recall correctly, because oh. I know casting in China yeah. for 2017 was when Samsung Galaxy won, and the year before mm -hmm. that when it was mm -hmm. SKT, Samsung was in LA. Um, and then we went to China and Korea won, right? Like when we finally went to China, yeah. that was when Damwon won and broke the China curse. I know. Um, and, then, and then when it was gonna be in China, we went to, we went to Iceland, right? It was going to be in China. China won, EDG won, and we were in Iceland. So we haven't had a home soil champion since 2015. And yeah. actually, no, before that, because 2015 was in Europe, but that was still SKT. So this would have been 2014 Samsung White. I'm pretty sure that You're was right. the last time. Yeah. It's been, it's been eight years. It's been eight years. So that means it's definitely going to happen in year nine, right? It's, it's time. It's, it's time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, on to the recap of LCS yeah. week two. <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to actually start on a meta point. Um, so the bigger meta is NA is winning worlds, but the second one is uh, Smite Top because I think yeah. we're at a really interesting inflection point. If this wasn't during uh, like Chinese New Year and LCK and LPL weren't off, I do wonder if this would be the like kind of the only region that's doing it because last week we had FlyQuest do it twice. They won both games. This week we had FlyQuest do it zero times, but we had other teams doing it. So... Yep. I wanted to do the conversation of updated thoughts on one, is the strategy good? But I think the thing that people are more interested in is like a clearer idea of how it does work and a clearer idea of some of the things that will work against it. And I think we learned a lot of stuff yep. this, this week, but I'll let you start. Sure. So what's interesting is, um, the th so I've played maybe 10 games of Janna Top. Um, and I had like one or two of them where I'm like not Janna, but like same strategy. Yeah. Um, and like all the things I discovered in those 10 games, like I don't feel like I've learned anything new watching these games out yet. Like it feels okay. like the teams I'm watching play don't have more experience than I do playing with my platinum friends in normals. Like truly, I believe that. Like I'm not yeah. seeing anything like interesting and unique. So the things I already knew is you need a tank support because someone's got to die for that turret and it's not your jungler because there's no way you're playing this with Zac, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So like it has to be a Leona or a Rel or something. And mm -hmm. I don't think we even saw that every time. Like I think we saw enchanter support sometimes from a funnel team. Maybe that's incorrect. Maybe I'm wrong about that one, but that's what I remember seeing. Um, so, but either way, yeah, like that's required. TSM ran it and, today with Rel and yeah. Lulu, which worked. And then when yeah. uh, when EG ran it, they also had Vulcan on and Engage Champ. So I, yeah, I okay, think so we have good. seen tank support. We haven't always seen it with the Hyper, though. We saw it with yeah. Jin back in week one, and I didn't like that. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it with Jin either. I think winning through bot is the safest way it works. We're yeah. just like, you snowball your bot so far ahead that they just do whatever they want in the two-on-two -two and no one stops them. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, cool. Like, that's still checking off the boxes where, like, I knew that already. That's cool, just from normal games. Um, the other half of it is I want to see a turbo hard pushing top lane who like makes you 1v1 them because they're going to take your base otherwise. And the closest we got to that was CLG who were just slamming FlyQuest mm -hmm. uh, with Jenkins playing Graves. He ticked an inhibitor and then he just like stopped split pushing. And and this uh, and this is the, the point I kind of want to segue into, but maybe we'll get in this one for a second. It's just like it seems like so many teams are 
really out of practice with split pushing that they like, don't know what to do when their top laner is ahead. So I will spend more time on that one later, but it's like, yeah, the opposing team needs a top laner who like scales with gold, can solo push and gets a whole lot done. We saw a different version from Golden Guardians today where they didn't finish the turret with their Graves top. They swapped the Felios yeah. over and said, yeah. instead, we're just gonna get this guy ahead. And it's less about the Graves and still Licorice is pretty big, um, but it's, it's going to be more about bot lane. It's more about having the uh, the head of Felios. He's going to get the rest of top turret. He's going to come back and take bot turret. We're going to keep moving him around the map and being ahead. I'm not sure if that's better or worse. That is the one new thing I've seen, to be fair. And I yeah. think it was actually clever. And I trust Inero to be a smart man. So maybe that is the better version of this. Um, but uh, I, you know, I... I at the you know, end of the day, I'm still in the spot where, um, you know, you, you do need to have at some point this side lane pressure because we still got to the point mm -hmm. where the only way Golden Guys got stuff done was like, okay, so, like, you got to go do something licorice because, like, even though I think Aphelios is a better late game carry individually than Jinx, Lulu Jinx beats Aphelios plus nothing, yeah. right? Like, there's no way Rockets plus Whimsy doesn't beat every champion. That was the big thing um, that I noticed in the So, like, so your comp game. can't do that anymore, right? Like, mm -hmm. you're against a teamfight comp who, you know, are on 5 item 80 carry. The Jinx caught so many waves, she was ahead of the curve despite the try of the Aphelios, which makes me think maybe the Aphelios funnel doesn't actually work, and it has to be Grace with the team up, because someone has to answer Graves, and you're either sending your mid lane mage out there, mm -hmm. Okay, good luck having only one carry. That's that feels a little too much suspect. It can't be Lulu. It can't be Rel. It, right? It can't be anyone else. So it's like you're not sending the jungler out there, right? So yeah, like you, like the opposing mid laner has to answer the grave split or whatever that champion is, mm -hmm. or you have no gameplay. And teams need to be able to play that split push. So like those were all the things that I knew existed from my time yeah. playing it, and yeah. like seeing how hard it was for us if my mid laner can't handle York. Oh, we just lose the game. Um, and so there are a lot of constraints on the on the Lulu top Karma top team. Because someone has to answer that threat, assuming that threat exists, and it's on, I think, the other team to drop the ball and not keep the threat going. Yeah, I agree with pretty much everything you said. What I would kind of sum up, though, is like the Lulu top with low farm plus the Jinx plus the Rel, like that three was stronger than a giga farmed Graves, a really farmed Aphelios, and his support. Like that was sure. that was an yeah. interesting thing enough because the Lulu with an enchanter item, even if it's just like an enchanter item and a chemtech putrefier, was still enough to make that jinx like so crazy yeah. in in the five v five. So it it just reminded me of how ridiculously strong late game that can be and how good the bridge can be of having a fifth person on the map. What was interesting to yeah. me about the TSM game is like. Actually, the TSM game and the EG game, where the EG game was like very kind of boring. They were down like 4,000 gold to Dignitas early and then still scaled up. Uh, but the game could never like break completely unless, like you say, it was broken through top lane, but we just haven't seen that for whatever reason. So in order to like beat it, my two prescribed things would be like, just go even crazier in your scaling pick. But mm -hmm. if you're going to get a super powered top laner, I don't actually, if you're going to do the scaling thing, and I actually don't even have the champion in mind yet, but like, what is the best team fighting top laner that is good against AD carries? Like, is there an, a top right. laner that can outrange? I don't know. Like, yeah, I mean, like, people say Kale. Right. I, I kind of wonder if Kale's Kale, too slow. But, like getting to 16, she, like, yeah, she has, she has friend. So uh, my she'd opinion be good is at, like yes. 14 because she's going to get turrets anyway. So that's maybe true. Um, the only things I kind of caution is like, okay, you don't have a really good way of stacking up passive pre-16 because every auto is a bunch of attack speed. And then yep. once you're at five stacks, yep. you get the AOE then wave. That's where like mm -hmm. a third of her damage comes from, it feels like. Um, like the attack speed included. The attack speed mm -hmm. has an AP ratio, by the way. So like it really, really, really matters, right? Um, so the pacing's too high for level 16 to be there. Um, free farm level 14, Kale, yeah, is pretty good, like to be wow. fair. Um yeah, Graves doesn't seem to be the best team fighter when you have really good battle lines, to your point about what's going on there. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if having an enchanter with farm, like what keeps you from playing top zillion and autoing turrets and then just like being a zillion? And maybe that's okay. That feels weird, yeah. but like, what if that works? But what if it's also Orn like doesn't punish your side lane enough? Right. What if it's just yeah. what if it's Trindamir? Yeah. Right. And like, I think that's also reasonable. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the things is you talked about how the the those three champions, right, Lulu, Rel, uh, Jinx, is better. Um, and I agree, is because I don't think Grace is actually that good of a of a front to back team fighter mm -hmm. because Rel's going to be in the way. Lulu's got shielding and. Graves hits frontline like he's hitting an ulted Sinjao. Like, does he care? Does no Graves like Sinjao doesn't care, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like you either want a diver 
like you can bring back top nocturne kind of thing uh, where they nerfed his landing phase but like the entire rest of his kit works still yeah. um you know the idea of playing like an ad jarvan and it's like yeah so when ezreal ults you and we like throw the jarvan ult jinx dies probably every time uh i'm not sure what the other divers are out there right but like that's maybe the look is you can divers tend to be good 1v1 champions when they're mm -hmm. ahead like that works pretty well um and maybe right or yeah. you really are saying no we're just splitting yeah i know trend of course can group right and yeah. that actually works pretty well the ulti uh but that's kind of the where i am with that thought is is yeah. I, and maybe it's like jacks right or you know it really is just like a fighter with cc who is to flash stun and just win the win the fight from there yeah there, there's one more thing i want to add before moving on to uh individual teams i also think the reason that you know Lorlo, I think, has better knowledge of this than almost any LCS team. You've played it a few times in solo queue and you feel like you haven't necessarily learned much. I feel like almost every LCS team is like dipping their toe in the smite top pond because they know that Riot is just going to get rid of the pond in a couple weeks. So yeah. no one so is this, really oh, go going super deep on their theory crafting. And I actually don't know if this strategy is going to be solved. We have like one more week of it. And then there's the big, yep. uh, I mean, not a big, but they are changing the support item. Like they're taking a swing at it. And that also signals like, if that doesn't kill it, well, then the next thing will kill it because clearly it seems like Riot is willing to kill it. So I don't, I actually don't know if this will ever be fully explored or we're ever going to get the answers to these questions, which is why theory crafting can be fun, but I just don't know if we're going to yeah. have proof. Right. And I am, I, th I thought about it a little bit and I'm actually in the other camp where okay. I think they should, people should go more all in. So the reason why, and this is actually keying off uh, the interview, I forget which player, but one of the one of the players interviewed on Sunday about playing the strategy around yeah. and like playing around their strong, you know, four-man bot side. Um, so the two thoughts are basically, one, I don't think the nerfs that are slated for 12-4 are going to remove it. I think okay. it, it's, it riots taking what they can that like make that that's low-hanging fruit that's not going to break the game apart in other ways. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be enough. It, a lot of it's around gold bounties. Um, the idea of your top laner getting like some CS in that lane is not terribly important. Um, cause we see a lot of these guys get like get 20 CS and then move on. And I don't think that's going to be a big deal if that gets nerfed a bit. Um, and the reason I think it's still worth going after is I think you are still playing the game League of Legends. And a lot of the things that exist, even in those game states are still going to carry over in the future. Um, I mean, you know, much the same way it's like, oh, why should we practice Azir? What if Azir gets nerfed? Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's also a bad argument. Uh, and so the reason I say this is, um, <clears throat> so when, you know, you, keying off the player saying, you know, yeah, you know, when we have like a really, really stacked bot side and it's just practicing, yeah, we have to go for these dives, go for these plays, go play higher tempo. We have to kind of like learn to play higher mm -hmm. tempo. That's a normal game state, right? Split mm -hmm. map jungle happens, right? Where you're actually 3v2 on the bottom side or you have the mid push already, right? You're playing with a Twisted Fate or a Rise. They're going to be there every time, right? Mm -hmm. 4v2 map states are not that uncommon. You can just practice them and play the strategy and just like get reps on getting the most you can because getting the most out of your advantage is, is important, right? We, I mean, how many teams have we seen just like fail to push leads because they're uncomfortable? Well, here you go. You must go, go, go 4v2. Um, on the other side, right, it's, it's I think historically, and it's the reason like NA Jace has been a meme, um, is I think our teams have been historically quite bad at playing split push. Okay. Uh, I just have memories of Huni getting to the world finals on Jace, and he just like refuses to group with the team, and he's just like hitting bot lane tier two with a Mana Mune and whatever his lethality item was, and I'm just seeing a 5v4 mid, nothing happening, and I'm like, who needs killing your inhibitor now? Mm -hmm. At what point is someone going to answer this man? And he, like, what he's doing is so effortless. He's, like, literally aim moving down the lane. Um, but, like, T1 knows how to split push, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he's set up for it. Um, and, and so I think about this and I say, hey, how many games, like, could you have gotten a Jax counterpicked and, and, and tower dove at level three, right? Imagine a Jax mm -hmm. has a winning lane and gets first blood and has... Okay, well, he still has perfect farm. He still has all five plates. He still gets Herald. He still kills the turret. He's also up first blood. He's more fed than against Lulu, right? Like, there are games where the top laner is more fed and more ahead than the current landscape with Smite Top. Mm -hmm. And teams don't know how to play around it. Mm -hmm. Despite, like, and that's even more ahead, right? So, like, you can play this, and on the other side, you can literally get these reps in to learn how to ward deep for your top laner. He probably goes blue trinket at nine. You put control wards down, and you ensure this guy gets to kill the inhibitor while you're trying to fight bot lane tier two, right? Or you're getting your second dragon or whatever. Like, and you can, like, I think these game states are worth practicing because they're relevant game states, even though the way mm. you got there is not typical. So even mm. if Smite top is gone, at some point, Licorice is going to be five kills ahead of the enemy top laner, and Golden Gunner should know how to play around that, right? Like, that's a real game state that will happen this season. Mm. Fair enough. I I think we'll have to keep tracking it. That's an, that's yeah. an interesting take. Uh, let's, get to, yeah. let's get to best LCS team at the moment, because there's a logjam. 
at the top of the standings. Yeah. There is five teams that are tied for first right now. Uh, currently, I would say after two weeks, the best team in the LCS is going to be TL, partially because of the way they looked, like maybe even with Ayla as their support, they'd be the best team. But I also expect that they're going to be getting core JJ back at some point, which just has me pretty confident keeping them at number one. What What's your take? So I don't like the ones I'm looking at, like their strength of schedule right now. And yeah. Team Liquid's one good win, and I'm, I'm taking this to be Cloud9, yep. was against um, Fudge playing Metarelia. And mm-hmm. I personally didn't like the Metarelia. Um, I, the fact that Blabber got two or three ults canceled by Gragas, and hey, Whippo is outstanding, right? Those mm-hmm. players are very, very good. Word on the street is Core JJ might be playing very soon for that team. Like, that's really exciting. That really comes true. Mm-hmm. Um, TL look pretty stacked. But like, I look at 100 Thieves, and it's like, oh no, well, they beat TL. Um, they beat Evil Geniuses. They, they had that one last to immortals okay yeah. whoops but like they've beat the other cream of the crop and looked really good doing okay. it um and and maybe it's actually cloud nine and they're just like oh yeah they're the enchanter mid team and they're just gonna keep wrecking faces doing so and that could be fair uh but I look at the other ones and it's like okay well you know fly quests 2-0 in the first week was playing a strat that might die and it was against two of the weakest teams in the league right they beat clg and they beat golden guardians whose 2-0 week included beating clg Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, and the other was what TSM, right? Like they had actually the easiest schedule of all time. They played both zero four teams. That's their two a week. That's one of the teams FlyQuest beat. The other team they beat was CLG, who's also zero. Like, and and TSM. Congratulations, yeah. your three wins are against the literal three workiest teams in the league. I don't believe in you, FlyQuest at all. Right? You beat nine, ten, and eight. Strength so, of schedule so, wise, you know, FlyQuest has easily the the lowest yeah, strength of schedule. So yeah, it's yeah. Uh, just to recap everyone. It's Hunter Thieves, Cloud Nine, Team Liquid would be like the three traditionally top teams that you'd expect to be three and one. And then Dig and yeah. FlyQuest would be the two surprising ones. So I think FlyQuest is out of the running for top. Yeah. Um, and Dignitas yeah. probably as well, if I'm reading between the lines. Their drop be... was to EG yeah. and they beat TSM Mortal CLG, yeah. right? Like their their collective opponents are one in 11. So right, your... so the teams they beat are one in 11, I think for Dignitas. Do you have a call? So, so yeah, Dignitas becomes a too. pumpkin. Uh, so my call is just going to be 100 Thieves. Like, that, that's this call I'm going to make. Okay. Um, yeah, initially, my call coming into the season was going to be 100 Thieves, um, Team Liquid, EG. Mm-hmm. Um, I keep the 1-2. I bring CNN up to third, uh, being, you know, impressed by their week one. I think it overall does look good for them. And and that's, like, my 3-4 is, like, the EG Cloud9 line. Okay. I, uh, I am also, like, people are weirdly down on 100 Thieves, I think, because obviously lock in uh then yeah. sure they bounce back to 2-0 but then they had that bad looking loss to immortals but when i watched the fbi player of the week interview which they actually filmed right after the immortals loss he like he copped a bunch of the blame he's like we actually you know i didn't play well enough who he didn't play well enough we didn't have a better front to back team fighting comp but we still tried to run it down we were disrespectful like i feel like they diagnosed that loss pretty well and I think when they played a more controlled game like they did against EG, they're still going to be like very much top two, top three. I just, I just edge TL partially because I think Bwipo has been so outstanding uh, and their games have just looked the most controlled. Uh, but to your point, yeah. C9 did play what I thought was their weakest draft relative to their player skills in the TL game which was the yeah. blabber on, I made this point in the, like LCS pre-show. Blabber on Karthus is fine, but he just clearly didn't have the reps on the pick. Um, so that comp might have actually been the coolest or like the best because it's the like cool AP jungle. I really loved the first strike uh, like gold, gold farm halt that he did. Yeah. It's like dragons up in two and a half minutes. No objectors are here. I am just getting a kill. Like I want to do that in solo queue. Yeah. But you shouldn't because the fights are going to be the way too so rapid. It, it's yeah. only going to work in LCS. I was like really wanting him to do it more, but I think he found the one moment where he should have done the first strike all for gold, and he was pretty smart for the rest of it. But uh, yeah, it's it's interesting at the top, and I I think those are the three. And uh, yeah, I'm TL. You're hundred thieves. Yep. Another team I want to talk about in this one was uh, actually Golden Guardians where I, I had this note actually before they even won the extremely sloppy TSM game that almost would have had everyone like losing faith in them. But I, I kind of wanted to say like, watch out for Golden Guardians. I think there is an outside chance they have some major upset potential. Next week they play 100 Thieves, which I'm actually really looking forward to that game. And then Dignitas. So I think that's, I actually think they will be favored against Dignitas for me. 
um, based on the way they play. And I'll tell you, I'll kind of tell you why. Like their early games have actually been so explosively good. Part of their on Oracle's Elixir, they keep track of turret plates now, um, mm, which is pretty cool. And since there are some map splits and they've played two kind of map split games, that is definitely a slight advantage. But like they're at nine plates per game. The next closest is 6.5. Um, their gold advantage at 15 is over 2,000, which is the highest in the league right now. They have been horrendous yeah. at closing games, but I just see a lot of really good signs out of the way they're they're like playing the map. Um, and I think they're going to... I'm not saying they're a top team, but I think they have a sure. pretty good chance of, of getting pretty close to 500 this year. The problem I have with that, though, unfortunately, is two of those games were against Funnel. Sunday against FlyQuest exactly. and Sunday against TSM. Were. But I will say yeah. the FlyQuest okay. game... Like, the funnel is supposed to be good early. I just haven't seen that actually happen, I feel like. The like, first weirdly... FlyQuest one, it was. Yeah, I, I keep okay. seeing the top laners, like, run it down with numbers advantage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, I think about Fly CLG and, like, yeah, you're right. Like, Jenkins is, like, just solo pushing and getting stuff done and getting a bunch of turrets and he's getting big. Yeah. But the other side of the map is still going equally well. So you're right that, like... You're probably right if you graph all funnel games. There's not an obvious gold lead for one team or the other, mm -hmm. but but that's you fair. Know, like using, the stats, the stats are, like the are going to be a little bit tarnished, yeah, especially skewed. the plates and the gold stats, because the the plates yeah. in particular, like if you're map splitting, the plates are going to fall really fast. Yeah. So yeah, unfortunately, they do have that that bias there. That said, I mean, I do think they're good. Like I'm, I've been a Golden Guardian Homer for a while. Ever mm -hmm. since they kind of retooled the. The, the the team management with um Inero and Danon like I've been mm -hmm. I've been waiting for good things and it's usually been pretty positive so I still definitely believe in them and I think Pride Stalker is amazing uh so I'm, I'm a big fan of the team I think they're really good I am agreeing with you that I think Golden Guardians Dig is a very good match I personally favorite Dig actually I think they're the stronger team but I think that is a really really good line for okay Golden Guardians you won against two zero four teams now you get to play against the middle to high end teams like I have mm -hmm. Hunter season number one um like okay this is your real test like let's get it what do you think about C9? I know last week I, I said it was like the most interesting team in the LCS. And then yeah. because they're not undefeated, right? They kind of dropped the game. There's decidedly less Cloud9 hype. But yeah, what's what's the update of your thoughts? I'm hyped. I, I'm still hyped, right? Yeah. They do clearly play somewhat different. And we say this is like, well, they picked Zillion, which is what TL already does. You know, like mm -hmm. that's already Bjergsen pick. But, um, you know, it's just, it's fun. I'm glad like the players talk so much. So um, I ran into Fudge in uh, makeup today and mm -hmm. I was like, you know, play another Strocket game and he let out the biggest sigh I've ever heard. Um, <laughs> and he plays Zillion, which is practically the same champion. Um, oh, God, they're so and, different. I mean, they're a little different. I think you're Zillion's still playing. so much harder. Probably, think, right? So he's probably harder, but you're also still a raw enchanter, right? You are playing an actual enchanter. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. your CC's a bit more reliable, but you're clearly a utility champion, yeah. right? Like, he is not the carry. So it, it's, I think, in spirit, a very similar pick, right? Okay. In the way that, you know, that, that's my belief anyway, right? It's it's yeah. a slightly cooler karma. Uh, anyway, the, the point is that Cloud9 definitely have unique looks, though, right? We have three enchanter mid picks, which is more than any other team has combined, right like counting the bjergsen like two zillion games um and then also like they have this really cool triple ad karthus thing where right they're like oh yeah the actual tech is aurelia flex early because blade mm -hmm. of the ruin king got buffed mm -hmm. um into i believe triforce's second item mm -hmm. um and and knowing this is going to turn into an ap jungle draft because oh well of course all top laners are physical damage and of course all the meta bot laners are physical damage right so it, it speaks to ls having a really intelligent read on here's how comps actually work out he mm -hmm. has beliefs on what junglers are good it clearly could have worked the karthus game right and the draft lined up for it so so far i've seen like a really cohesive drafts every time we're like oh mm -hmm. i get it they're doing this thing and and obviously LS is smart enough to know matchups and his players are smart enough to know matchups. Um, the fact that Summit built a Warden's Mail is like 10 out of 10. Like they're even making good <laughs> itemization choices. Uh, like he's building a Warden's Mail the first I've ever seen against Jace. And across him is PoE, who's building Void Staff second as the only match damage threat in his team. And I'm like, this you is- You went really this is hard on PoE. Nine. It's really dumb. <laughs> I'm just, like, and I know itemization is never the primary reason you win a game. Um, so it's only ever 10% yeah. of the game. But I do wonder, like, how different top lane looks with, when that man has Bramble Vest and the Jace can still push him, right? Yeah. Like, does the freeze never happen? Does he never get control or whatever? Um, there was a bunch of other stuff that went wrong that, like, you know, the Jace had to solo flash a Malphite ult with no one ganking him because they have no word control, right? Like, mm -hmm. there's other mistakes mm -hmm. being made here. 
Um, but like, it's good to see cohesive builds come through, like, because that's what I nerd about. It's cool to see a comp that like makes cohesive sense that like was planned for from step one. Like, that's really cool. Yeah. It stands out to me, and and I credit LS for that, and and the rest of the players on the team. Yeah, I'm still on the hype train as well, and even with the loss. Uh, I said this on the desk as well, that like I'm totally fine with it. Blabber wasn't comfortable on Karthus in terms of reps. He was still like a much better Karthus than most players, but he wasn't like he wasn't a malice level Karthus, who would be what you're comparing him to as malice being the sub jungler on the team. So I, I'm still okay with it though, because it's it's week two, man. <laughs> like it's yeah. so it's week two of spring. And they're definitely looking forward towards world. So being able to have the threat of that type of different cohesive comp uh, is something that I'm fine with them experimenting with. If being uh, like a draft gap team is going to be a large part of their identity. I don't think you actually yeah. need to have a like a plan of being a draft gap team to, to like win in your region, but it's yeah, sure. definitely a strategy that they look like they're pretty core towards going, going into. And, and I super respect them for that. I'm really looking forward to seeing them continue still, still like must watch TV for me. Oh, absolutely. Love every game. Okay. TSM. There's zero. Sky's four falling. Man. There's zero four. There, there's, how, there, how much they're 10th place in both leagues. So I, I think it is. So that is bad. I, that is bad start, is but really it's bad. also only two weeks. So I know. it's, it's like, like contrasting the young, this is the, this is the biggest thing for me. And this is why I like, um, I would not want to be inside TSM right now because I think there's so much pressure that can be put on them, but it's also yeah. like fascinating for me to watch it because fr- fr- like, when are they going to panic? Are they going like how much time, how many losses can they have before either a coaching change or a roster change is almost like a thought experiment. Uh, yeah. Keeping in mind like how they lose as well. Cause some of them are super one sided and some of them are close like today. Yeah. So I think the biggest thing is um, the real answer is completely internal. Um, yeah. It doesn't matter if they're zero 18 or six and 12. The real answer is what's going on internally that, that mm-hmm. we won't see until another TSM legends comes out. Um, so, you know, I want to do a, a quick sidestep on the two weeks in. Like, Academy's 18 games in. They just have the Rose Academy team. They're 4 and 14. They've played two games against every team. They have yeah. the Rose Academy team. So mm-hmm. there's not, like, easy people to bring up, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it has to be an outside signing if you're trying to immediately write the ship. So the goal is, hey, it's a growth squad, right? And I talked mm-hmm. about that when I was doing the intro for the game um, today, Sunday when we're recording this. Um, I accept that TSM are a growth team, and that's okay. I don't, I don't need them to win a bunch of games to to see it. I want to see where it goes, right? I, I need to see growth happen. I don't think they came in day one and they're like, we're perfect now. Mm-hmm. But you know, by comparison, Dignitas came in and on day two they fixed half their issues, and it feels good. Um, from seeing some of the champions Q tweets from from um, challenger or ex pro players, yeah. uh, the, the call that I liked a lot because I retweeted a tweet about it um, was. Um, broken English comms greater than regular comms because jungle come top, I need reset, is better mm-hmm. than, hey, my wave's crashing, man. I'm going to be down 15 CS. Like, can you come up here? Like, it's really <laughs> just Just be actionable, right? Like, yeah. um, like as someone, I play a lot of pre-mates with friends and, like, our comms are abysmal. Like, we, yeah. we do so much dumb stuff. And it's like, yeah, I just tune everyone out after a while because, like, three of us just won't stop talking about dumb stuff that doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, if it's just, like, top die or, you know, come top this wave, right? And just like you have some level of coordination and yeah, you can you can get better if everyone's English is fluent and you can have you know more conversation back and forth. But if you can get rudimentary comms down, you have 80% of the game, right? And keep in mind that like all the Chinese teams who won Worlds basically all had two Korean imports, which means they found a way to make it work as well. And they won the world championship doing so. So clearly mixed language teams can work very, very, very well mm-hmm. if what three of the last four world championship teams have had two imports each. Right. Um, and okay, yeah, Rookie who, Speaks Fluent Mandarin. Who like, have okay, learned sure, the language but, quite well for, as far yeah, as Yeah, of course, know. right? Like, and, that's, and that's fair, right? But like, hey, that means that TSM trajectory is getting to a part where coordination is going to be easy, right? It's not always day one, of course not. Mm-hmm. Uh, so again, to cycle back to the point, um, what what's going to work for TSM is how is work going inter- internally? Is the growth still happening, right? You picked up LDL players with the expectation that they're going to grow into the role. Like, Speak mm-hmm. is ready now. He's the defending MVP. He's been to the world. So it wasn't a great showing, but whatever, right? Like, he's obviously a very good player. Huni's done the, done that. Tactical's done that. Like, these are all good players. And okay, it's up to Shendi and Kaiduo to, like, get up to where TSM wants to be uh, with players who are or can be top three in the role, right? Mm-hmm. And, and have done so via all pro voting and an MVP ballots and whatnot. So um, as long as they see growth, 
then they're happy. If like actually it's 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 not working, it's not working. Can we call up Demonte and get him off of CLG Academy? You know, then then maybe it's that. But um, it's all going to be what work looks like internally, mm -hmm. not what the results are on stage. Mm -hmm. I I hear you, but I also think there's some type of benchmark that when you hit a breaking point, something happens. Like it's. I, I also think they're a development team, but it's a question of like how much development because you don't really see, and I know we have a split system, but Spica is the MVP from last year. I can't think of a sport where the reigning MVP is okay with being like 0 and 8. You're on whatever, yeah. Yeah, like it just doesn't happen. So I think that they're 0 and 4 now. If they get to a point where uh, like... After four weeks, we're going to have nine games done. Their eighth game of the year is against COG. Like, if that's a double zero seven 7 matchup and they lose to CLG, that's rock bottom. And I don't see them... Like, that's where I see them bailing, if there's a bail. Um, but the like to speak more specifically about their gameplay, we've been talking a lot about their theory and, and Nick's language stuff. Uh, their lane assignments, and I... I if I have time, I'm going to go deeper into this. Their lane assignments are really weird, therefore probably pretty bad. Like, just think, um, just think about how often you've seen, just in your mind's eye, like tactical alone on a jinx in a side lane dying. Right? It's happened like multiple times in the last week. And now think other jinxes in a side lane by themselves ever. Like, sure, it does Me happen. Solo queue. <laughs> it does happen. It happens in yeah. like solo queue, but like either they have vision and they're pushing at a wave when they know where everyone else is, or they have cover with them, or they're just mid. Like, it's so frequent that like once turret plates are down, sure there's moves around the map, but the default lane assignments is solo laners go side, 80 carries go middle. But like it just feels like no one is going side lane. And this is a feeling thing. Like, no one is going side lane, so tactical sees a wave up there and he goes up there, or there's like Kaiduo and Tactical in mid lane and Tactical's like, what the hell? Where's my farm? And he just leaves. And like, it just feels like they're not even talking about... And one, I actually don't even think you can talk about lane assignments that well. I think it's something that kind of needs to flow naturally. They are definitely not flowing naturally. And when when that yeah. when that is off, like an, an AD carry like Jinx being in a side lane, just to like give an example of kind of how the game flow works, like... A solo laner in a side lane will get push. That means they'll have a turn, which means they run into river. And that's when your team either gets a fight because they have numbers advantage on a mid wave or they get mid turret like push so they can then move into river um, if the viewers can follow there. But when an AD carry does that, like the turn that an AD carry has is so much less lethal than the turn that a solo laner is going to have. It's really like you're just not going to make progress in the game if your jinx is the one catching side waves and moving so that's worrying their hands are still good like yeah tactical had some ridiculously awesome team fights in the golden guardians game uh that almost turned the game around also in yeah. typical tactical fashion he like never he has like all gas no break he did like four things amazingly and it's like i tried for the fifth one and i died okay yeah that's, that's too bad but there's, you know, that that same like fingers potential you've always seen. Yeah, I mean the fact that that I mean he's he's so almost I don't want to say single handedly right because the fact that Lulu's throwing every button on him is such a big he deal. Um, cracked in but so much. He that was game. he was so good. Like mm -hmm. I, and and I, he was the first player cam I saw when the game ended, and he's just like, just like zoned out looking at his computer. Like yeah, he did everything he could have right like. And it's not like Huni did anything extra wrong. I think there was one mm -hmm. fight result was down because he wasted it. But like he did the, you know, the four out of 10 that you can only do out of Lulu because there's only so much to do on the champion. But like, where's his support? I mean, I guess, you know, um, Olive was kind of running it, but but still like, mm -hmm. you know, someone else just do any more of the heavy lifting here. The fact that both solo laners got with Elder Dragon got killed by the Graves to lose the game. Like, yeah, they would have lost anyway because of the, 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 main, the main base stuff, right? But only because yeah. Lulu had to also go back. 
Um, you know, like mm-hmm. it's like, okay, well, you know, damn, imagine, imagine, you know, anyone else plays better on that one. Um, when they did the Baron stop, like Vex misses her ult, which would have been probably a triple kill and stopping Baron and the gameplay goes different. So like you can, you can point fingers at a lot of stuff, just like, you know, mechanically going wrong. Did, um, did you yeah. see, um, this is a bit of a tangent, but did you see the Telestrator segment that I did with high before the yes. uh, COD dig game? Um, yeah, yeah, the, the dig is hot fog of war trying to start. Yeah, the thing, kind of yeah. like game of inches thing. So high, he might have another one for next week because he was watching the Golden Guardians TSM game. I haven't seen it yet, but it, he's going to show it to me next week. He counted like five different instances where one player does something different in that TSM uh, Golden Guardians game, and it's over. Like there were yeah. five, like there are five moments where one player makes a different decision and the game is over. It was it was so nuts that game. Yeah. I think all the games like that have that. I, I, I still think back to mm-hmm. uh, Cloud9 Samsung Blue Game 3. Um, or maybe it was Game 4, um, where Cloud9 goes for the base race. Oh, you're thinking uh, all they, the way they, back they, to 2014. Yeah. 2014, yeah. yeah, yeah. 2014 World's Quarters, where, like, legit Lemon shields something too early. Just, like, something unimportant. And then they get into, like, a team fight at the Nexus Towers. And it's like, if he has shield, Sneaky kills everybody <laughs> and the game's over. And they're up 2-1 against Samsung Blue. The, like, reigning LCK champions in the quarterfinals, right? And it's like, maybe that's maybe that's the run, right? And, and you know, but that's, again, that's another eight-year-old thing. You know, the last time we had, uh, you know, winners on home soil. I maybe appreciate the, the hope someone anyway. will call you out. Cloud9 yeah. was down 1-2. Yeah. It would have forced a game five. Yeah, and then yeah they, they would have forced then they something like that. Well, they, yeah, yeah some, some of that effect, right? They never like, had two wins. Yeah. That, they won the first you're game right, and then right. they lost they the next They gotten the second yeah. win is yeah. the thing, right? Yeah. So uh, they would have been in that state. But yeah, uh, anyway, whatever. Just like, it's, it's this thing I still remember because I was like, this actually would have been a thing. And and, yeah. and so that's been in my memory for a while. But yeah, that, like any of those games are so tight where it's like, those are the things that happen and just slightly better hands, slightly better instincts is what goes on there. And and Tactical played on the edge really well, right? Like mm-hmm. he, I think he actually is really, really good. The fact that he was third all pro on TL last split. And he is... I mean, he and Spika are the best players on TSM to me right now. They they are both very, very good. Shenyi is very aggressive, and he makes some mistakes, but also some killer plays. Mm-hmm. Like, he has gotten them some great kills, and he's also, you know, had some eight death games. Um, mm-hmm. So he's, like, he's very also all gas or breaks, which, by the way, like, makes that bot lane pretty good. I like watching them play. Um, but, yeah, I see your point about, like, coordination issues, like, just not having the basics and fundamentals of, of who's catching waves where. Like, that needs to get fixed, right? And what well, you have a, what, one split or two splits? From from Kaiduo out of LDL, like mm-hmm. that's not a lot of time. Mm-hmm. And I compare him to uh, Tukui, who you know also has only played in LFL, but like mm-hmm. I I didn't I haven't looked at it up recently, so I don't remember how long he played there. But like also has never had an LCS level league, and he's doing just fine. Yeah, right. Like we're happy with him. Blue played a, a bit of of LEC, obviously like not an actual rookie in any way, but like he's great. Right, quickly, you know, like relatively early on in the career. So, um, you know, there, there are other players who like took a shot with an import without a high level track record. And those guys are ready much sooner. I was speaking with uh, a pro player. I don't need to name them for this. But he was surprised that if you were going to go with a development player that doesn't speak English, support is a strange role to do that. And I, I hadn't necessarily thought of it from that angle, but I kind of agree. Like AD carry, even mid, like even top, someone who's not needing to communicate so much with the rest of the team and like really control the vision. It's it's like just kind of an even harder transition, I think, for him to to move into the pro game than than a different role, which is interesting to think about. Yeah. Um, here's an impossible question that like Great. you have a you have like a one in fourteen chance of getting this right. TSM has fourteen more games. They're zero and four. What yeah. is their record at the end of eight weeks? Three. I think it's I'm gonna, right now with what I'm seeing. I'm seeing three and fifteen. That is that is what I'm currently That's, seeing. That is tenth. This. I think. I think that would be tenth. Yeah. I mean, the question, is, and I'm not sure if I like CLG or Immortals more than that. Um, but obviously going to play each other a little bit. So that's where all some of the ones yeah. are coming from. But like those are three that right now are circling the drain for me. That unfortunately just stuff's not coming together quite. Wow. Um, and and I think TSM are the lowest of that bunch. Okay. Um, yeah, they just haven't looked promising to me. I mean, like again, there are there are glimpses, right? Mm-hmm. There are parts that look really good. Um, still big on Speaky. He was huge in the game they played on Sunday. I'm big on their bot lane in lane. I'm big on tactical everywhere. Yeah. And so like that's gonna get you three wins. If they improve, it goes to like seven, right? If yeah. they get substantially better fairly soon, it goes to like seven. Ooh. But I you know I don't see them as even reaching skill wise a top five team yeah. so if they improve they could be skill wise the sixth or seventh best team from a zero four start right which is like maybe that reaches seven i was gonna give them six but i guess six and 14 means that they're, they're almost they're winning just less than half their games which yeah know, 
I'm, I'm going to give them six, which is... Six and eight from here? That's less than I put them at the start of the year because I had them as a mm. fringe playoff team, I realized. I had them in sixth, which which seems bold already. That's usually after, eight wins, right? Yeah, usually. It's usually eight or eight nine. Eight and ten wins. or nine and nine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some years it's been like year. ten because if you, if you have two teams that are really in the dumpster, then everyone's wins get inflated. Oh, right, yeah. Right now, <laughs> TSM and COD are those teams, but I it's, it's two weeks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to personally give it more time. After four weeks... I, I'm kind of going to do the same thing. After four weeks, I'll make my call if I've seen any growth. If yep. they look just as bad after four weeks, it's it's a ruined split. But I think they have to. Yeah. Uh, do you want to yeah. do? You want to participate in my way too early MVP rankings? Sure. Okay. Sounds fun. Yeah. So last week I did my way too early MVP rankings, which was after one week I, I ranked what my top three in MVP are. I actually have a top four now. Um, I'll just give them to you. Go. Number one, mm -hmm. not on the list last week, but still had a good week. I'm. Whippo is actually my MVP front oh, yeah. runner after two weeks because he just has so much impact on every game. Agreed. He's he's actually my number one. Even if I don't have TL as the best team, he is so clearly the best player in the league right now that he's my number one as well. So yeah. I agree with there. And he's got such a good personality too. I just I'm oh, he's amazing. Fan. I love him. Yeah. Uh, then I go Berserker, who was my number one last week because I thought he played like actually two perfect Ophelios games. He had a Jin game where he made like one big questionable decision, um, but his Ezreal game was again like fire. So I think he is actually just so good and could actually be like one of the core reasons that the like cloud nine LS thing like works. Like you can do all these yeah. crazy drafts and all these enchanters and all these different things. But if you just have the best AD carry in the league, you're going to win a lot of games almost regardless of yeah, what you're you are. doing. So he's two. Yeah, Botlane's really big. Yeah. Uh, River is three and FBI is four. That's how I, that's how I rounded out right now. Okay, yeah. I mean, I think River makes a ton of sense. He's clearly, like, outstanding at Dignitas and, and really solid. Um, I'm excited to see Cloud9 against TSM next Sunday and then Cloud9 against 100 Thieves the week after on Saturday because mm -hmm. those are two of the best in-lane bot lane teams, right? I actually have a lot of faith in Shen Yi Tactical, so I want to see that fight. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, 100 Thieves, it's all about FBI, Huey, and Clothes are playing in bot lane. So, like, those are the cool tests for me especially. Um, they, they've already fought the EG game, right? So, you know, they, they did just fine against... Um, Danny and Vulcan. So mm -hmm. I just want to see the other matchups of, of the bot lanes that I respect a lot and see where that goes. Um, so yeah, I think of Cloud9, Berserker is probably the front runner. I agree with that one. There's honestly a case, it's an outside case, where a Fudge actually just keeps fighting enchanters and they work really well. Maybe he takes the ballot from each because like mm -hmm. if he plays them well, he just becomes most impactful mid. And yes, it's going to yeah. be Blabber looks really yeah. good. Yes, it's going to be um, Berserker also looks good, but like I can see Fudge going on the ballot for that. I don't know yet, but but like I want to you know pencil him in underneath Berserker here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then Hunter Thieves like as my best team. Yeah, I think FBI is the easy leader there. It's it's him or um, closer just in general. It's always going to be those two who seem to be like doing the most heavy lifting. So yeah, uh, yeah definitely Whippo. I probably agree. I, I'm trying to think of, like who actually becomes the top three if it's if it's FBI slash closer or River or um, uh, uh, Berserker, mm -hmm. but like. I'm just so heavily Whippo that it's like there's no one else on my ballot right now. Like I just yep, want to see more, sure. so it's just Whippo, and then no one's no one's enough for me yet. Awesome. Anything else you want to talk about or, or even plug your YouTube, your patch rundowns? Oh geez, yeah. Um, YouTube.com/slash/freak. Actually, pretty easy to type in. Um, yeah, patch rundowns every patch uh, the morning of, so Tuesday mornings usually or afternoons. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes I'll do a uh, week off content as well, where it's optimizing builds, because I like learning about builds as well. Those so really cool. sometimes it's going to be stuff there as well. Um, so yeah, sometimes it's like off meta picks who should be played, or sometimes it'll be, uh, I think in the future, I'll be doing some for meta picks who can be optimized a bit. Um, I did some research a couple nights ago, and for a lot of the top picks, actually, people are building them pretty close to optimal, which mm -hmm. that was kind of nice. nice. Um, there's only a few things that I would that I would quibble about. We can bring those up when I want to make a video. So um, otherwise, though, keep watching LCS, but of course you do. You're watching this podcast. Or you're someone who doesn't watch LCS and only keeps up with it through JLXP weekly recaps. Yeah. I don't know how Watch some LCS, that. especially when I'm on. I tweet about it. Follow me on Twitter. Yeah. For those of you who've seen my screen change color, it's because I've had my outline on the main screen, but now I have my recording software on it, which makes it a little darker. But I will say yep. thank you again for listening. Please, uh, you know, like the video, leave a comment. I read all of them. Subscribe ring so you know bell. when new episodes are coming out. Yeah, ring the bell, all this YouTube stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, comment, subscribe. Yeah. 
so also just if you made it to the end, you're going to want to know when the next episodes come out. I'm going to be doing an episode with Nero from Golden Guardians tomorrow where we talk about in-house systems. And I'm going to be doing an episode with Emily later in the week where we go over her 10 thoughts article that's most likely going to drop on Thursday morning. So you watch this on Monday morning. Nero is coming out Tuesday morning. Emily's likely coming out on Thursday morning for the JLXP episode. So thanks for watching. Once again, thanks for being here, Freak. And I'll see everybody next Thank time. Thank you.